Coming up in the next 30 minutes, President Okufado in the State of the Nation's address says even though government and Ghana as a whole has been disrupted by COVID-19, there is much room for economic recovery. My government found the resources to cushion the impact of the pandemic because we are good managers of the economy. We have details on this as we bring in the business community's response to the just ended State of the Nation's address. Plus, the banks have been the resulting end for the $5 billion euro bonds to support growth-oriented expenditures in the 2021 budget. We have details on this and the ramifications at that. Also, all is set for the 2021 budget on Friday as expectations of an increase in taxes loom. We have details on this one as well coming up shortly with me, Charles I. Tip. We have all these stories coming up after this break. Hello and welcome. I'm Charles IT. Well, just gone by, President Akufuado presented the State of the Nation address with COVID-19 and the economy being the center of his presentation. As you can see on your screens there, he's currently filing out of the four courts of Parliament House where he made this particular presentation. Of course, it's very much important to note that his presentation was very much pivotal on Ghana's growth rate for 2020 being reviewed from 6.8 to 0.8 percent. Revenue shortfall also estimated at 13.5 billion CDs. Expenditure on COVID-19 being that of 11.6 billion CDs with the Fiscal Responsibility Act scrapped due to the pandemic. Now, the president has outlined the priority areas of his economic management under the 100 billion CD Ghana Cares program. Listen in. My government found the resources to cushion the impact of the pandemic because we are good managers of the economy. And we are good protectors of the public purse. Mr. Speaker, the pandemic has exposed the need to expedite the process of moving Ghana to a situation beyond aid. That is why government has developed and is currently implementing the 100 billion CD Ghana Cares About Tampa program to transform, revitalize and modernize our economy and return it to high and sustained growth for the next three years. The key projects under the CARES program include A, supporting commercial farming and attracting educated youth into commercial farming. B, building the country's light manufacturing sector. C, developing engineering machine tools and ICT digital, digital economic industries. D, fast track digitalization. E, developing Ghana's housing and construction industry. F, establishing Ghana as a regional hub. G, reviewing and optimizing the implementation of government flagships and key programs. And H, creating jobs for young people and expanding opportunities for the vulnerable in society, including persons with disabilities. The establishment of the National Development Bank under the Ghana Cares Program is expected to provide financial support to businesses in Ghana. Government expects economic activity, which is already picked up to do so even further following the ongoing vaccination exercise.
Well, let's stay a little further on the president because the COVID-19 has had a dire impact on the economy. President Akufuado said that the pandemic eroded all the gains made since 2017 and, of course, biting over 770,000 workers, having their salaries slashed over 40,000 workers as well, losing their jobs. This is how he painted the picture of the impact of COVID-19 on the Ghanaian economy. Indeed, the cost of COVID-19 has been enormous. Our overall economic growth rate for 2020 was reviewed downwards from 6.8% to 0.9%. The non-oil economy was also revised from 6.7% to 1.6%. Revenue shortfall was estimated at 13.5 billion CDs with additional expenditures related to stemming the tide of COVID-19, estimated at 11.8 billion CDs, with a combined effect amounting to 25.3 billion CDs, or 6.6% of GDP. The resultant fiscal deficit for 2020 was thus revised from 4.7% of GDP to 11.4% of GDP. This was done to reflect the impact of the pandemic. The fiscal responsibility rule of keeping a deficit within the threshold of 5% of GDP and the positive primary balance for every year was suspended in 2020 to enable fiscal operations to accommodate the impact of the pandemic. I indicated at the time that we know what to do to bring the economy back to life. What we do not know how to do is to bring people back to life. Well, except of President Akufado's State of the Nation address. Joining us for reactions from the business community is the President of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Dr. Joseph Obin. Doctor, once again, we're so grateful that you could honor this particular interview. First of all, what is your response to the address by the President earlier today? Yeah. Um, before his address, um Media men have asked me uh, what is our expectation. And what we have said is that um, we want access to affordable credit. And um, if you listen to the president well through the Obatampa CARES program exactly. that he wants to introduce, he has made it clear that as part of it, they are going to establish a business development bank. Um, um, from it, and this, this is the kind of um, um, uh, 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 this is the kind of calls that we've been making, that the government should set up a parallel uh, bank that can subsidise um, um, a credit mm. because the cost of uh, borrowing is very high. You, 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 he said that interest rate has come down to 14 percent, uh, 14. Um, the base rate have come down to 14.5 percent, but the same does not trickle down on the commercial rates. Mm. It means that what government have to do is to get this um, um, a, a power bank or alternative bank for businesses to uh, outsource our credit at cheaper. That's the pain of businesses mm. at this time. For me, at this time, if you ask me what the business community needs. I will mention three things, and they are all the same. Mm. And that is um, access to affordable credit. And that if this is structured in a manner that in the past, um, certain financial institutions have been designed to fast track the activities of certain uh, sectors, like uh, Bank for Housing and Construction, uh, National Investment Bank, uh, Agri Agri Development Bank, and all that. I think that's the same thing that the president seeks to do. And I'm overly excited that uh, this has to be fast-tracked and uh, to make sure that we can um, assess affordable credit from here. If they are not able to compel 
the commercial banks to come along with the base rate. The gap is too much, and uh, the, the, the cost of borrowing is way too much for the business community that is started as the engine of growth. So if the, oil, uh, the engine of growth have to be um, oiled, then it should be oiled through um, some, of, uh, some initiatives such as the one that the president said, and it is a welcome uh, development. So I get from your statement that even though the president has laid out specific interventions to cushion the effects of COVID-19 for traders like yourself, he didn't really hit on the result factor. I mean, as you've at least stated, the parallel banks needed to be established, among other things. But moving forward, what do you think was left out in the entire address by the president so far from the perspective of Guta? Yeah, um, to tell the truth, I've mentioned what we need. And um, if what he said is anything to go by, uh, the establishment of a bank, business development bank, I don't know the exact name that it was given. This is what uh, we need. If um, the credit there will be subsidized mm. at a real affordable rate. Because other countries are having um, um, their uh, credit at 3%, 5%. And here, 23% uh, and all that um, 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 keep businesses at bay. It doesn't help businesses at all. And then uh, the only thing for businesses to thrive is um, 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 the affordable um, credits or um, cheaper um, uh, borrowing sure. um, rates. Yeah. All that, right. That's so the only way that businesses can thrive, especially when um, we are now um, entering the, uh, we have already entered the continental free trade area. We are going to compete with our other counterparts from mm. other countries. And if their rate of borrowing is cheaper than us, we are already edged out. And all what um, we see to gain from this agreement will be, will come to naught. Doc, let's end on the note of the uh, the budget, which is going to be read somewhere on Friday. Yes, we've seen the Citizen the Nations address, but. One other big event is going to be on Friday, the reading of the budget presentation. We've engaged Guta, and one major issue on your plate now, aside from what you've rightly stated, is the event at the port, the, the regime, the, 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 the port regime, which remains so unfavorable for traders like yourself. Going into the budget presentation, what key message do you want the uh, majority leader in parliament who is going to be ste stepping the shoes of Ken Oferiata to address in this budget presentation? Yeah, um, as a matter of fact, um, we want um, cost of doing business to be tilled to the minimum level. And that's what we seek the minister um, to do. And they have been able to put down some of the levies um, at the port to a very minimal level. It started from 19 different um, uh, levies. And then we put them down to about 12. And with time, it's going up again. And uh, we want um, the, the finance ministry or the government to think through that the cost of being, doing business is gradually going up after mm. they have uh, reduced um, the benchmark values, um, that's the duty rates and all that. And so um, this is the area that we want them to look at. That, right. um, uh, taxes should be maintained. Um, much as we know that government will want to enhance on its revenue collection, there are other ways that government can uh, do to make sure that it can en enhance on this revenue uh, collection. Uh, by way of looking into the... Um, the regime of uh, uh, tax exemptions. Okay. Um, that, that is uh, seriously being abused. If you look at the activities uh, of the free zone area and all that, uh, how people are abusing this so-called tax exemptions and all that, government have to revisit uh, it and then um, 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 maybe they, they, they have to revise the whole thing all right. uh, to make sure that at least the gains that we get from there can uh, make up the 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 the, the taxes that they do not increase Great. and also we are also expecting that um, we reduce expenditure on especially the areas that do not ensure growth hmm. admit 
so that uh, uh, business cannot be fettered with some of these uh, uh, expenditure sure. and all that. So we, we, we also we want the government to look into uh, the uh, expenditure patterns okay. and then um, uh, 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 make sure that um, where the expenditure is predominantly, uh, it, it, it goes to ensure um, the growth um, of, of the economy rather than All right. um, any previous expenditure. Yeah. Great and, submission. Uh, this happen, it means that it's not going to put a necessary burden for us to pay um, another taxes. That's why I say I expect that taxes are maintained. And then that, uh, the tax net is still not expanded enough. Great. Great submissions there. I think most of these concerns that you have raised will be, you know, forwarded to the right sources, especially when we're building up to the budget presentation on Friday. But speaking of the budget, of course, we do know that uh, it is now certain that the majority leader, Osei Chairman Sabons, will be presenting the budget for this particular year. The reasons much more uh, known to us, Finance Minister Keno Furiata currently receiving treatment of COVID-19 complications. But the Information Minister Kojo Pondo Nkrumah has revealed that taxes could be reviewed upwards to show up the revenue lost to the pandemic. But just before we get in touch with him, here is a report. Specific tax items that government has agreed to review as well as the possible new ones it plans to introduce remain unclear. But what Joy Business is learning is that government is looking at ways to finance the budget deficit, which has seen significant spikes as a result of the pandemic-related expenditure for last year. All these fiscal proposals that are on the table are aimed at fast-tracking the process that will get the country back to the fiscal consolidation process. But with the deployment of the vaccines, it's now clear that government is on the path to carefully manage the spread of COVID-19. The budget will therefore come up with some programs aimed at fast-tracking the recovery of the economy this year and going into 2022. Another option that the budget may be looking at, if the tax path is not agreed, could be borrowing. However, it is the belief of governments that maybe the time has come for Ghanaians to effectively contribute to the development of the economy. After weeks of speculation, it has now been confirmed that the majority leader in parliament, Osaichi Mensabons, will present the budget come Friday the 12th of March. What remains uncertain is if he will lead the post-budget interviews and debate in Parliament as well. Joy Business understands that several initiatives will be announced aimed at stimulating growth in all aspects of the economy. So expect a budget that will be targeted at full recovery of the economy post-COVID-19. And joining us is Dr. Mark Esibe Yeboa. He is the former chair of uh, Parliament Finance Committee. Doctor, we're so grateful that you've joined us. So many developments happening, the key one being that of the State of the Nation's address. Friday, we're going to be expecting the budget statement. From your perspective, having to look at your vast experience and your depth in finance, where do you think we should place our energies going forward? Oh, okay, so... Um... <coughs> Uh, today's uh, address by the president, uh, uh, as you rightly uh, stated, was on the state of the nation, and so that uh, transcends just uh, uh, the economy. He, he spoke on health issues, right. agriculture, pretty much um, everything. But on Friday, we expect the presentation by the majority leader to focus on the economy, so mm -hmm. that will be the national. I guess. Uh, so we want to see government uh, uh, projections for revenue. As the president indicated, in 2020, revenue declined by about 13.5 billion. Expenditure, primarily because of COVID, also went up by about 11.8 billion, giving us a hold of over 25 billion. Mm. So moving forward, even as the projections have been made, how do we ensure an inclusive growth? Yeah, if I may, why, why we got this 25 billion oh, was because of COVID. Now I ask you, has the COVID gone away? So if COVID uh, remains the way uh, it has been, then 
I, I'm sorry, we might not see some of the growth numbers that are being projected. Hmm. Vaccines are being rolled out. How many people are going to get the second shot and how many Ghanaians are going to get the vaccine? So if we contain uh, the pandemic, then we should start talking of uh, the uh, growth that we expect. So I'm concerned more about the rollout of the vaccine and then the containment of the public because we were in that hole because of the COVID and the lack of vaccine. Mm. And so how the vaccines are rolled out and how we are able to con the COVID world spare group. So we should be concerned about those health matters. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, for expenditure cuts, it's right in the ambit of the government. Government decides where it wants to cut expenditure. But the revenue, I've heard about tax increases. I'm not so sure if there's a time to be increasing taxes, but we are in such a hole. Um, businesses have uh, suffered. The taxes are not coming in as expected. Are we still going to burden the few businesses that are already paying taxes by increasing the EAT or petroleum levies or whatever it is? So uh, uh, these are in, we are we are in uncharted territory. We are not so sure uh, about about uh, the way to go, and we still have to see how COVID uh, containment and the rollout of the vaccine uh, go. Interesting. So now begs my question, how do we ensure that our growth is inclusive moving forward? Um, uh, the president indicated that uh, a number of people have lost their jobs. Some businesses have collapsed. We do not have uh, an unemployment compensation scheme here. Mm. If indeed we, we want to push in the poor, the vulnerable, our women, the youth, and those who have lost jobs should be given some form of... Um, uh, to to get by. Now, the agriculture sector uh, 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 has not suffered that much, and so we want to see more more work in that sector, the planting of the jobs, and the uh, one district, one factory sure. industrialization. When we, are, we put much effort in these areas, then the growth will transcend to um, all, all, all spheres of the economy, because um, for small-scale uh, businesses, government has to be doing something to help them. I don't know uh, how the cutback program has been sure. successful, but uh, for growth to be inclusive, you have to target small, medium-scale mm. enterprises, oh, women, yeah. the poor, the vulnerable. All right. Dr. Marcus Sibe, we're so grateful that you joined us. He's the past chairman of the Finance Committee in Parliament. Well. To another developing story, government has commenced the processes for the 2021 International Capital Market Funding Program. Now, the government is expected to raise up to $5 billion and the funds will be used to support growth-oriented expenditures in the 2021 budget, as well as to conduct liability management of both euro bonds and domestic bonds. According to a statement from the Finance Ministry, the Bank of America, Citibank, Rand Merchant Bank, the Standard Chartered Bank and the Standard Bank have been penciled down as lead managers for the raising of the euro bonds. The statement further said the program instruments consist of euro bonds, diaspora bonds, sustainable bonds, and syndicated bridge loans. To that effect, this is big, and we shall be dissecting its impacts in our subsequent bulletins. But just before we leave, owing to a spoiled hauling machine in the eastern region for the past eight years, coffee farmers there are getting less than half of the value of their produce. My colleague Emma Davis has more. In one of the biggest coffee plantations in Bipong, a suburb of the Kuo district in the eastern region, Seidu Ansumana, the farm manager, decries their inability to earn as much due to the lack of a hauling machine. A year, Juma, the process is necessary to use a machine. Coffee, no. Yeah, the good way. But I would do good way, no. The machine is a year, Juma. Not all pretty, the best of them. A better, a friend will move a good box him. None a husk, no. As also, a fair at the pipe we have face a cord of man, a pier cord of man. It sucks, you know, but in the house can be in outside. Nadia, best of them. It is out of no beauty in a whole pretty idea. As I know, as I said, no, as I said, go into a year and the ass of them, a doctor boxing. How many bags can this unhask, like unhaul? 
Oh, a year, Juma, that could be a bit me as a baby, but it's more than 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Mm. And a bit pong, too, is one of the largest uh, coffee plantations mm. in Ghana. Actually. And this is the only hauling uh, machine actually. we have. Actually, this is the only hauling machine. Me Which go, has been spoiled. Enough farmers who are also producing coffee at Ntomimo and then some villages there. So there's no other hauling there machine no other hauling in, the whole in the whole area. Without the machine, uh, it's quite difficult for these farmers to haul the coffee. Looking at that, they, they haven't hauled a lot of coffee. That's why they are selling the unhauled coffee at 350 um, cities. Per 65 kilograms. Seido and Samana reveals that they are partnering with government to implement the planting for export and rural development, where coffee seeds are given out for free to small scale farmers. However, they are lamenting that support from government is inadequate as termites invade the farm. In Madeira's there with the plights of some coffee farmers in the parts of the region. That's it for this edition of Business Life. My name is Charles Ayte. For me and the rest of the team, many thanks for watching.